Hey there, and welcome back. This is Felix from Goldamer Vintage Watches. When you ask vintage watch enthusiasts which chronographs they would count among their favorites, most of them don't have to think twice before the Omega Caliber 321 comes to mind. And today we take in a deep dive into this beautiful caliber. It's important to note that this inspiration is usually influenced by the collector's community's fondness for the Speedmaster and its connection to the moon. But watchmakers and collectors have loved this movement long before the Speedmaster hit the market, which you can definitely understand from our model today. When we talk about the Omega Speedmaster, we immediately think of the Moonwatch. Of course, a historic watch famous for being worn on the wrist of astronauts during the first moon landing. But the Caliber 3 to 1 has so much more to offer than only the Speedmaster and the Moon, because it's an exceptional movement that undoubtedly deserves all the praise and attention it receives. And today we are going to explain you why. Our special watch from 1952 today, the reference 2468, comes in a large 37.5 mm 18 karat rose gold case with crisp case and beautiful design glass. Accents like the amazing rose gold hands and dagger hour markers complete the classy look of this watch. This chronograph is powered by the Caliber 321, making it a more elegant option for collectors who want a Caliber 321 but don't want a speedy. As you will quickly notice here, the watch is in excellent condition. Chronographs usually have two pushers through which moisture can quickly penetrate and cause enormous damage to the dials. A crisp 80-year-old Omega chronograph like ours here is therefore very rare to find on the market. So let's start today's video with some quick facts about this great movement before we get into the history and specifics of the movement. Production years. 1946 to 1968, winding, manual, frequency, 18,000 beats per hour, diameter, 27 mm, height, 6.74 mm, joules, 17, power reserve, 44 hours, functions, hours, minutes, subsidiary seconds, chronograph with 30 second counter, 30 minute counter, and 12 hour counter. Next we would like to look at the genesis of this groundbreaking movement. The Caliber 321 was not originally developed for the Speedmaster, which was first introduced in 1957, but appeared already in 1946, more than 10 years earlier. Like so much in the watch industry, the Caliber 321 was the result of a collaboration, in this case between Omega and Lemania. Launched in 1942, the Lemania 2310 is the movement from which the 321 drew inspiration. This Lemania movement is still one of the most popular movements in the world of manual chronographs. The quality of its mechanics was so appreciated that it was used several times as a workbench for calibers of other historical houses. This is due to the fact that it has been used by a variety of watch brands, such as Patek Philippe, Audemars Piquet, Bacheron Constanti, which clearly speaks for its quality and workmanship. The robustness of this movement combined with its effectiveness and aesthetics have helped make the Lemania 2310 one of the most important chronograph calibers in the history of watchmaking. The 2310 and SAS Amiga's 3 to 1 is a hand-wound chronograph movement that is quite small compared to the average of the time with a diameter of only 27mm. Omega decided to use this caliber for the first time in 1946 in a series of chronographs with three counters and steel or gold cases. The name of this caliber was not 3 to 1 like our current model, but 27CHROC12, the actual name that resulted of the collaboration between Lemania and Omega. This unusual name by today's standards embodies the most important features of the caliber. 27 for the millimeters and diameter, CHRO for the complication offered by the movement, namely the chronograph, and C12 for the chronograph hours that can actually be measured. In 1957, Omega gave the world its first Speedmaster with the 321, so designated eight years earlier, since 1949. And everything that came after is, in my opinion, <laughs> a familiar story. 
But why exactly is this movement such a masterpiece of its time? Apart from the fact that it is incredibly elegant and beautiful to look at. Let's dive into the essence of this precise timepiece. In summary, this machine is incredibly robust. It is extremely resistant to high speeds and critical temperatures. It is solidly built and can withstand years of wear and tear. Of course, many other manufacturers applied for the Moon mission with excellent movements that had to pass many tests and trials. Many failed, others had only a few flaws, but only one caliber really made it and proved that it was up to such an important task. That's because the 3 to 1 had some technical refinements that set it apart from other movements of its time. The chronograph functions were operated by a column wheel, as seen here, and not by a cam. It is a device that initiates all action in a chronograph. Rather than a wheel, think of the column wheel as a small pillar. Running vertically along the pillar are protruding columns that interact with the varying levers controlling the chronograph start, stop and reset functions. Column wheel chronographs are considered to be of higher quality than watches with cams because they are more complex in design and function more smoothly. They are also generally more visually appealing in my opinion. But what exactly happens in the movement when we press the start button and the second hand starts moving? I will guide you slowly and piece by piece through the individual parts of the mechanism. Because once you understand it, it's not as complicated as it seems at first glance. When you start the chronograph by pressing the upper start button, the column wheel lever moves and causes the column wheel hook to rotate the column wheel forward by one turn. Several things then happened in rapid succession to start the chronograph. The rotating columns of the column wheel contact the finger of the chrono wheel brake, causing it to lift and release the chrono wheel in the center of the movement. An instant after this, the column wheel contacts the finger of the chrono coupling arm and causes this arm to move clockwise slightly, just enough so that the transmission wheel contacts the chrono wheel. This causes the chrono wheel to rotate, which on the dial side of the watch translates into the chronograph seconds hand starting. The stop process and the reset via the lower pusher work similarly in reverse order, which is why I won't get into it. But as promised, it is actually not that complicated, right? The real beauty of a classic chronograph like the 3 to 1 is its adjustability. With many modern calibers, everything is set at the factory, making adjustment of the movement a thing of the past. The caliber 3 to 1, on the other hand, allows for infinite adjustment of the minutes to ensure precise running and optimal chronometric performance. At first glance, the Omega 3 to 1 resembles many chronographs of its time. Most were equipped with a column wheel and feature similar components. However, it is only when you compare the small details that it becomes clear that the Omega is truly special. And yes, it's true that the 3 to 1 movement owes much of its popularity to the current market where vintage chronographs are so hot right now. But that shouldn't detract from what this movement is in itself. Simply wonderful. The Speedmaster is very hip in the collector world right now, and yet the 3 to 1 will remain an exceptional chronograph long after the trend is over. That's it for today. I hope there were a few things that were new to you and that we could learn something new. So have a great day and I hope to see you in our next video.